This video is gonna tell you why the Sony 16 to 15 millimeter kit lens is much better than you think. Well, how do I know what you think? Well, I don't know what you think, but you did click on this video, right? And more than likely your question is, is the kit lens good enough? So what is a kit lens? A kit lens is basically a lens that comes with a camera, usually called a kit. That, that's really it, it's, it's that simple. But there is a dark side to this lens. Uh, I got it, I have an evil idea. How about we make the kit lens so that as soon as he gets to the most important part of a shoot, the lens shuts down. Hmm. Oh, that is evil. I know. When I say the kit lens has a dark side, I don't actually mean that it's bad. I just mean that there is a misconception that the kit lens is a starter lens. And if you're trying to grow your videography skills, you should stop using it. When I came out here, it was perfect. It's like a thousand degrees out here now. I gotta go back in the house. This is crazy. Now listen, I wanna be straight up with y'all. Kit lenses aren't always made to the highest of standards. What I mean by that is sometimes they will have plastic bodies or even the lens elements inside, which is the glass inside of the lens, isn't always the highest of quality. When you compare them to something like the Sigma Art line or the Sony G Master line. But just because they're not built the same doesn't mean you can't get great things from them. And it doesn't mean that just because you're not getting the exact same quality that you would with some of these other lenses, it doesn't mean that the quality of this specific kit lens is bad. Now I will tell you with this kit lens, there are some things to understand about it. Not necessarily bad things, but things that you should know. One of the first things about the kit lens is it is a variable aperture lens. If you don't know what aperture is, they are just the tiny blades inside of the lens that open and close that either cut light out or let light in. The wider they're open, the more light can get in. The smaller they're closed down, the less light can get in. And this affects not only your exposure, but your depth of field. Now with a kit lens, what happens is when you zoom in, your aperture changes. And when you zoom back out, it changes again. Now, most lenses are constant aperture lenses, meaning if you zoom in and out, the aperture stays the same, but that is not the case for the kit lens. Again, we have a variable aperture. So what this can mean is if you're in a situation where you have your light set exactly the way you want it, and then you zoom in, you're gonna notice that things change. I'm gonna demonstrate that. Now you can see how dark my face down here has gotten. My aperture is now at 5.6. When I go back out again, now I'm at 3.5. So that's one of the things you should know about a kit lens is that most of them are variable aperture. Now when it comes to variable aperture, there's no way to turn this off. This is just part of how the lens is made but I don't think that this should deter you from getting this lens because what this can actually do is it can make you better at adjusting your settings on your camera quickly. So you can learn to zoom in and change your ISO or your shutter speed quickly. Now, one of the misconceptions about a kit lens is that the quality is trash. That's just not the case. Listen, is this lens the best, the sharpest lens? Nope, it's not. Is it going to give you some chromatic aberration? Yeah, it is. You're gonna see some fringing and all kinds of things. If you start to look really close, you'll see it. But for the most part, it doesn't really matter. When you're shooting for things like YouTube and vlogging, it just simply doesn't matter. Now keep in mind, everything in this video, every single clip has been shot with this kit lens. Now, of course, I've added lights and my own touch to it, but it shows you that this lens is very capable of getting some decent looking footage. Now, when it comes to the features of this lens, this is a 3.5 to 5.6 variable aperture lens. It is a 16 to 50 millimeter focal range. So this is a zoom lens. Now, another plus of this lens is it has OSS, which is Sony's optical steady shop. Now, what that means is it has a built-in stabilizer inside of the lens. So 
we know the ZV-E10 doesn't have IBIS, but it does have the ability to take advantage of OSS. Now you can use the OSS with this lens, or you can use SteadyShot, or you can use the gyro or the gimbal that's built into this. I actually like to use OSS with this lens here because what it allows me to do is I could take longer shots. I don't have to run them through Catalyst Browse. Now, another thing that people talk about a lot on YouTube is low light performance. This is not a low light beast. And I'm starting to question how important is low light performance? When it comes to low light performance, I think this is one of those things where YouTube has blown this thing out of proportion. Everybody runs their lens through the filter of, I need something that can shoot sharp, crisp images in low light. Now I'm not saying that a wider aperture lens doesn't matter, but what I am saying is don't allow the fact that this lens starts at 3.5 and goes to 5.6. Don't allow that to let you rule out this lens as it being something you can use. Wondering if the Sony 16 to 15 millimeter kit lens is good enough. Well, it is. The question is, are you good enough? Commercial is not sponsored by Sony or affiliated with them in any way. Sony can't help if you suck with the kit lens. Please do not call or write in about this commercial. It was your choice to watch. I want to give you a few reasons why I think this kit lens is worth it. One is its size. If you go somewhere on vacation, you want the setup to be as compact as possible, especially when you're doing things like flying or going on a cruise or anywhere where you're not really going to have a good place to place your camera. You may have to keep it with you or on you. This tiny lens keeps this whole package very small. And the thing I love about this lens is the fact that it telescopes in and out. So when you turn the camera off, this thing actually gets really tiny, almost like a pancake lens. And you actually may be able to fit this in your pocket if you have something like cargo shorts or something like that. So it is possible. But also what the size does is it helps you not to stand out. Sometimes when you're doing vlogs and things like that, you go into a place, people will tell you, you can't bring that camera in here, or they'll tell you, shut that down because it just looks big and intimidating. But if you just have this tiny little camera with this little lens, they don't think much of it. And they go, ah, whatever, he's got that little play camera. Now for some people, that's a big thing and they want their camera to look all big and expensive. But for me, I don't. I'd rather be in the cut hiding or just in the cut. Nobody's paying attention to me. I'm getting the footage I want and I'm making great content and I ain't gotta worry about nobody bothering me. Now, the second reason I think this lens is a great lens is because of the price. Right now, you can get this lens for about 90 to 100 bucks. You might even be able to find it cheaper than that. You just have to do some digging. Now, make sure you read the fine print to make sure the lens is functional. But this is a very inexpensive lens for what you get out of it. It's really great. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best lens out there that is tack sharp, but this can get you to a few thousand subscribers and even more with the kit lens if you were to use this on YouTube but you have to put the time in to work this lens. Now, the third thing about this lens, I will say that I think is one of the things that really sets it apart from all of the other lenses, something that we already mentioned, which is the OSS. But again, I like using the OSS in this lens. It makes a big difference. And for this lens being as small as it is and as cheap as it is, you really can't beat this lens. I recommend this lens to everybody. Now, the last thing I wanna say about this lens is it being for beginners. Yes, beginners can start with this lens. It is a great foundational lens to get your chops up to figure out how lens works and what's all involved in getting shots. But if you're a professional or leaning more towards somebody who's a little bit more experienced, you should still get this lens as well. Because what it can do is it can push your creativity and also it can push your skill level up. And what I mean by that is sometimes the limitations of a lens can actually be the thing that allow you to discover other things. Perfect example, because this lens isn't a low light beast, I have to add lights to this setup. So what that will teach you is how to light. You'll learn how close the light needs to be, how intense it needs to be, how to bounce the light, how to diffuse the light, and you can expand your ability to create with this kit lens because you are overcoming the shortcomings of this lens. So when you upgrade to a lens, you have a wider range of not only creative ideas, but also your skill level has went through the roof. 
So if it takes you a little bit more time to get a good looking image out of this, that's a great thing because it is honing your skills and allowing you to become a better person and not worry so much about the quality of the lens itself, but worry about how are you able to get the best out of that lens that isn't high quality. So below, let me know if you guys have the kit lens and if you plan on getting the kit lens and let me know what you will be using it for. Now, depending on the interest of this video, I might do another video on photography with this lens, because again, I think this lens will do great at photography as well. I'll holla at y'all later. I'm out. Peace.